This is a video presentation of 8th grade, Chapter 7, Section 4, Polygons. Our objective here is to classify and find angles in polygons. So what is a polygon? A polygon in some classes is just best defined as a sided figure. Now, that's a little bit narrow-minded because we really should limit ourselves to two-dimensional figures because three-dimensional shapes have sides too. We look at them a little bit different. We call them a little bit different things. All right, but let's, let's just go with that for now. It's a sided figure. So if we're talking the two-dimensional space, pretty much all the shapes that we know and love other than circle fit in the mix here. All right, those are all polygons from three sides on up. Polygon formally in this book is a closed plane figure formed by three or more segments. Now there's a specific type of polygon and it can apply to any shape no matter how many sides. That's a regular polygon. A regular polygon is a polygon in which all the sides and all the angles have equal measures. So they're saying, let's say we're talking about a triangle, that all three sides would be exactly the same and all three angles would then be exactly the same. Now the shape that's regular that most of us would think of right away would be square. Think about what we know about a square. It has four sides the same, yes, and all four angles are 90 degrees. Well, that means all the angles are the same. So that's what a regular polygon is. Now, what they then go into definitions for are the various uh, four-sided shapes that we deal with. We've got trapezoid. Trapezoid is kind of the odd duck of the four-sided shapes because it has only one, exactly one, pair of parallel sides. Most of our other shapes here have two uh, sets of parallel sides. Again, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. We've got parallelogram here. That's a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. Picture a rectangle if you're having a hard time with a parallelogram and pretend you kind of pushed the left and the right side down and it tipped over a little bit. That would be a parallelogram. Something like that. Right. A rectangle, well we all know what a rectangle is. A rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. A rhombus is a parallelogram with all sides congruent. And a square kind of puts both those together. It's a rectangle that has four congruent sides and it has four right angles. The rhombus just has four sides that are the same, but the angles are not necessarily all the same. The rectangle has the four right angles, but it doesn't have all the sides the same as we know. But the square puts both, the best, both of the best worlds together there. It has four sides that are the same and four right angles. So let's go ahead and take a look at example one here. It's asked me to find the sum of the angle measures in the hexagon. So as you can see, what they've done here is they've triangulated the figure. And we've already talked about triangulation. Triangulation is the process of taking a shape and dividing it into triangles. And the reason we chop it into triangles is because we know all about the sum of the angle measures in a triangle. The angles in a triangle make 180 degrees. So if we know how many triangles fit into a shape, what we then do is take that number and multiply by 180, and that's got to be the sum of the angles of the whole shape. Remember, what you do when you triangulate is you pick a corner in the shape here and draw a line to every other corner. Now, obviously, some of those lines are already there, so we don't need to redraw them. But as you can see in this hexagon that's in part A here, it's chopped the shape into four triangles. So we have four triangles at 180 degrees each. Four times 180 is 720. So the angles in the hexagon, when I add them up, some books would say the interior angles in the hexagon perhaps, when I take all these angles that I'm pointing to and add them up all the way around, those angles when I add them up have to make 720 degrees. 
doing the same thing in part B, but it's just a different shape. It's an octagon, which they then triangulated. Again, pick a corner, a vertex, and draw a line to every other corner. And you're going to generate triangles when you do that. In this case, six triangles. What do we know about a triangle? A triangle is 180 degrees. So I've got 6 times 180 here. 6 times 180 is 1,080, which means that the angles in the octagon, when I add them up, have to make 1,080 degrees. Okay, let's continue with number two here. They're asking us to find the angle measures now in the regular polygon. So we're going to start these questions off the exact same way as we did the previous. We're going to have to triangulate the figure, and then after we triangulate the figure, figure out what each angle is equal to. Now, the trick here is that we know that these are regular shapes. Because they're regular shapes, each angle has to be exactly the same here. So once I find out what all the angles are, then I just divide by how many angles there are. And because each of the angles is the same, whatever solution I get is how big each angle is. Now let's go ahead and start with B. Because B kind of looks like we, what we think should be a square. We can't really prove it's a square. But boy, do those angles look like right angles. Okay, So let's go now and talk about showing that this is indeed a square here. And the reason we can't say it's a square yet is because we're finding the angle measures here. So triangulate the figure. So pick a corner and draw a line to the other corners. Notice what we have here is two triangles. Two triangles at 180 each is 360. And then I'm going to take that 360 and divide it by 4. And indeed, when I take 360 and divide it by 4, that's 90 degrees. We know because the book said it was regular that that means that all the sides are the same. Well, if all the angles are 90 degrees and all the sides are the same, now we're absolutely 100% certain that this is a square. Now, some of you might be looking at what they're doing there for the work and saying, well, that looks a little bit different. Well, let's explain where that comes from before we go back and tackle A, because that makes our life a whole lot easier. What you see that I just highlighted there is the formula associated with the concept of triangulation. Notice what happened here is we have a four-sided shape, and we generated two triangles. And if you go back and look at the previous examples, for instance, the octagon, we had eight sides and we generated six triangles. Well, there's a relation there. The number of triangles generated is always two less than the number of sides. So that helps us set up a formula. All right, the number of triangles generated is n minus 2, where n is the number of sides. Well, that's great, because now I don't have to chop up the shape and draw triangles every time now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and multiply that by 180, because that's going to tell me how many triangles I have. And then since a triangle is 180, if I figure out how many triangles I have and I multiply by 180, that's going to be the sum, then, of all the angles. So that's why they're saying here 4 minus 2. We have four sides. And remember, it's always two less triangles, as we've seen in just a few examples we've done, which is 2. And 2 times 180 is 360. Well, obviously, that does match what we found here. So that's probably a pretty good idea to work with here. Then what they're doing here with this 4y is they're dividing by 4. Why? Because there's four angles here, and they're marked y. So if I divide by 4, I find out what a single y is or what one angle is. And as you can see, when they did that, they got 90 degrees, which again, matches exactly what we did. So now let's put that in our back pocket and use it to solve A, which should make this a lot easier. Here's our octagon with eight sides. 
Again, the formula says that if I subtract 2, that's how many triangles there are, which is 6. I multiply it by 180, which is going to give me the sum of the angles of the triangles I draw, or in other words, the sum of all the angles in the shape, in this case, the octagon, which is 1,080. Then, because there's eight angles here, and I want to know what just one angle is, I'm going to divide by 8. And when I take 1,080 divided by 8, I get 135 degrees. Now, let's just make sure we understand why this works. This works only because they're telling us that the shape is regular. Remember, regular means that all the sides are the same, yes, but what's more important for this question is that all the angles are the same. If the shape isn't regular, the angles could be something different, all right? And in which case then, you can't rely on this formula. But if the shape is regular and they're asking you to find the sum of all the angles, we can do the n minus 2 times 180. Or if they're asking us to find one angle, do n minus 2 times 180 and then divide by how many angles there are. But again, that only works simply because it's regular. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number three now. They're asking us to give all the names that apply to the figure. So now we're going to go back to that list of four-sided shapes that we generated earlier. Now there's a couple shapes that most agree would generally be considered but weren't actually on that list. All right, the major oversights would be the concept of a kite, which looks exactly like what you would think it does, the same thing that you flew when you were young, that shape is exactly what a kite is. Generally, from my own experience, generally you see kite come out of books that have a focus based on Europe. Um, you see that a lot more labeled than with UK kites, but we don't have to worry about that here. The other one that's also on there, the, um, it's listed in part, is an isosceles trapezoid. When I say it's listed in part, we did have a trapezoid there. Trapezoid can look a couple different ways. But what's important about a trapezoid, again, it was kind of the odd duck, it has only one set of parallel sides. So for instance, based on the drawing I just have, this side would be parallel to that side. Remember, the concept of parallel means if I drew those forever, they would never ever cross. But there is that special type of trapezoid called an isosceles trapezoid. Now, if you think you know the word isosceles, well, you do, because we've had an isosceles triangle, which meant that two sides were exactly the same. The same thing is true in an isosceles trapezoid. Two sides are exactly the same. In this case, this side is the same as this side, and this side is the one that's parallel to that side. Again, a trapezoid has only one set of parallel sides. Now, taking a look at this one, they're asking me to give all the names that apply to the figure. So the first one that's listed there is quadrilateral. Because again, a quadrilateral, that's the generic term for any four-sided figure. Now, the other one that should be ringing a bell right away here is square. Because very obviously, with all the sides that are the same and all the angles that are the same marked with that right angle mark, maybe that's hard to see. Let me magnify it for just a moment. With all those angles marked with the right angle marks, those are all 90 degrees, and that's what a square is. So square is the other one that we see right away that makes good sense to us. Now, there's some other ones in there. Let's make sure we understand those. Parallelogram only has to have two pairs of parallel sides. Well, if we look at the illustration here, this side is parallel to the bottom side. The top is parallel to the bottom. And the left side would be parallel to the right side. So since we have parallel sides there, two sets of them, that's what makes us parallelogram. Rectangle, well, remember, what does a rectangle have? A rectangle has right angles. Well, again, as we saw when we magnified this a minute ago, we do have right angles. And the opposite sides are parallel and congruent, which is something you've known forever. Well, this side is the same as this side, and they are parallel, we've already discussed. This side is the same as this side, and these are parallel. So that does make this a rectangle. Now, sometimes people have a hard time wrapping their head around that. But realize, just because all the sides are the same, doesn't mean this can't be something else. All right, we sit here and look square, 
but this is a rectangle. Just because all four sides happen to be the same doesn't mean this doesn't fit the definition of a rectangle. It does. And then rhombus. Rhombus, remember, doesn't refer to the angles at all. The term rhombus is all about the four sides being exactly the same. And indeed, in that illustration, the four sides are exactly the same. So here, um, we have rhombus as well. So those are all the names that apply. Really, the odd duck is the only one that doesn't fit here, trapezoid. Because trapezoid only has exactly one set of parallel sides, and indeed we have more than one here. So to finish now, they're going to ask us to find the sum of the angle measures in a heptagon. Remember, a heptagon is a shape that has seven sides. So if we're going to find the sum of the angle measures in a heptagon, let's use our formula. N minus 2 times 180. Seven sides minus 2, because that will tell me how many triangles are generated, which is 5. And 5 times 180 is 900, which lo and behold matches the answer that you already see on the screen.